the AI announcements are really ramping up again. Last week was a huge week with Sora and Gemini 1.5 and all of the crazy announcements that came out. This week seems to just be picking up where last week left off. Hey guys, it's Matt. This video would break some kind of Guinness Book of World Records if they were paying attention to my channel. It's going to be the, the biggest contrast of any video ever presented. The darkest, ugliest, not milk prediction of all time comes up front. I'm not really prepared to talk about it. Um, I've been watching enough of this AI stuff. I have an idea of what the end goal is for the asshole dark, the evil thing that lurks over the ass crack of reality. Um, I'm going to just mention it. We'll talk about it over the next few weeks. I'll look to get your comments. Then there's so much funny stuff on the back end. Matt, you're, you're going to present one of the darkest predictions of all time, but there's a bunch of funny stuff on the back end. Yeah, because the dark prediction doesn't affect us. It does not affect us. I am confident of that. We'll talk about it later. But there's so many things to laugh about and make fun of on the back end. If you don't like dark predictions, maybe I should leave a timestamp. You need to hear about the dark prediction because you don't want this to happen to you. Then we'll get to the funny stuff. So posted this on Twitter. After you get great base models like Stable Diffusion 3, what comes next? Control, composition, collaboration. And then he showed off this picture of a cat. They changed the food, changed the cat to a raccoon, changed the coffee mug to a glass, removed the cup. Change the strawberries to wasabi, change the silverware to chopsticks, put an aquarium behind it, and next thing you know, it's a little video animation here. So, not only does it look like we'll be getting Stable Diffusion 3 pretty soon, it looks like we'll probably be getting things like in painting and the ability to sort of replace objects within images. So, who knows what's going to come out of this Stable Diffusion 3 here, but I'm excited to get my hands on it. I'm excited that it's open source. All right, guys, for the dark topic, I'm not going to change the image. This is going to take a while to talk through. We'll talk about it more in the future, and the black cat is probably a good representation of the topic. Uh, the bathroom boys will be very, very happy. I'm going to get right to the point and try to justify it later. Remember, there's a lot to laugh about on the back end. What is the purpose of this endless AI regarding image generation? Stable diffusion, and then you mid-journey, and then we had the images, then they became HD, then they became completely photorealistic because you can't distinguish a real person from a fake person or an AI person. Some of the examples I'm going to show you from what Google's working on. Matt Wolf here presents the Google tool Gemini. If you're not following this, these, these are pretty impressive uh, images of real faces, but it's nothing. They have complete uh, photorealistic where it is indistinguishable from reality. So there are countless tools regarding image generation, not just OpenAI and Google, Gemini and the big names you know. There are a hundred other little companies that have little add-on features or, or app, I don't know what you would even call them, apps of some kind that support what Midjourney's doing. And of course, who's paying for all that? Of course, it's all obviously not milk. Let me get right to the point because that's what I promised. There's so much focus on image generation, it doesn't make any sense. Like, how much images, how many images can people use? What it doesn't, the Hollywood movie studios, I mean, it's not just for them, right? Like, what is all this for? And it's all free. It's all open source. You can get access to it. When it's free, the product is you, right? It's obvious to me, like, this is as dark as it gets, but it's just it's obvious that the ultimate goal for Not Nilk is to have a real human step into a reality that is completely fake and not know they stepped into it. Now, I can hear some of you screaming, this isn't my first rodeo. Matt, we already did that. Or what the truth drop Elon Musk alluded to, we've done that many times. This is probably just another layer. Yeah, uh, yeah, I hear you. It's not my first rodeo. Probably. We, we're, we've already been dropped into one. This could be the thousandth. The billionth, the billionth, whatever it may be, we are, it doesn't matter. We are here now, okay? How we got here or what layer this is, it really doesn't matter. We are here now, and I believe we've retained a degree of our spirituality and consciousness, and our real nature, at least for some of us, is retained in whatever layer this is. So I'm not worried about how many times it's happened in the past. So what if it's happened in the past? I don't, I want to avoid the next layer. It's obviously what they have planned. So forget whatever, wherever we are now or however we got here. They, you think they're ever satisfied? Did they ever put their feet up and smoke their Cuban cigars and say, well, we did it. Now we can relax for the next hundred years. It, that's what gives them away. They never stop. The Terminator, 
endlessly, relentless, hope, hopelessly, hopelessly devoted to rooting your soul. Hope that, yeah, hopelessly devoted to that one task, bringing down a real human. Doesn't matter if this is layer 1,000. They want layer 1,001, and they'll never stop. It's what gives reality away. What gives this creep class, minion class away, because that is their dark role. Okay, now that all these images, they would, it's like that Star Trek a movie where they tried to, there were there was a group of people indigenous people on some planet they had access to some i don't know fountain of youth or something picard was trying to hit on one of the local indigenous women and she was like 680 years old but she looked like she was about 38 but he's still trying to develop a relationship with her quite intimidating to me i don't care what she looked like to take out a 650 year old woman that would be a little i don't know i would have problems if it got intimate <laughs> later but okay matt stop that they, they want to, just like the Star Trek, they wanted to move the indigenous people out, but put them in a holodeck so they, don't, they didn't, won't even know they're not on their home planet. It's indistinguishable. And then the bad guys move in to the real planet that has the Fountain of Youth, etc., so they can cure their phage disease or whatever Melvin P. disease they have. Something similar is what they're trying to do to us. Okay, there's no reason for all this image generation, AI, all the time, endless resources going image, 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 image. It's just too many. For what? How many images can you play with at home and for what purpose? And Hollywood can already create their, it's not just for Hollywood. It's, it, what is all this for? This is, this is where we distinguish ourselves between what we can see. Whether I'm right or wrong, there's still something very dark here and what your friends and family see. I mean, I don't know what my friend Tony would say. It's like, what is all this image generation for? And its general presentation into the marketplace doesn't make any sense. I'll give you an example. If all this incredible stuff came from, say, one company and there was a breakthrough, OpenAI, this was Sam Altman or Sam Altman Bankman or whatever, and they came up with all this stuff, and that would kind of make sense. But what are the chances that you have multiple companies all developing the same or extremely similar capabilities at the same time. Now OpenAI has the best. The next week it'll be Google Gemini. Then it'll be the Stable Diffusion people who say they don't have the same resources, Matt Wolf says, but somehow they're keeping up. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? They were all given it at the same time or the, whatever, whatever's in control or this dark thing we call not milk. They were told they were given help or, that, or one company had a breakthrough and they said, you must give it to all companies. All work for not milk. All are welcome to work for not no, the little woman says in Poltergeist. All are welcome. It like happens the same way every single time. Look at the Intel Corporation versus the AMD chip battle of the mid to late 90s into the early 2000s. Oh, these three or four years, AMD is kicking Intel's ass. They went ahead. Then oh, Intel c catches up with Pentium 8, and now they're ahead of AMD. And just, What are the chances they just go, one just gets a little better than the other? I mean, in terms of something that's so impossible to produce a microchip. I mean, I've never even heard it explained how they possibly can even be produced. You can put so many circuits, millions of circuits on the head of a pin. I mean, how does that, who fixes that when the factory breaks down? You just go into the yellow pages and who could fix, oh shit, the whole, uh, what was it? it was called um, lithography or something. Litho the whole lithography plant just broke down. Who would get some guy with a, with a plumber's ass crack to come in from the yellow pages? Who even get to fix that stuff? Matt, they call it demon from some plane of hell to come up and fix it maybe but it doesn't matter we'll talk about that some other time how you, you, nobody nobody can even explain that weird stuff but so it's so Im the point is it's so impossible so difficult to wrap your mind around how these chips can be made but just what a coincidence you had two companies that were just kind of at the exact same level and probably it might still exist i don't know if amd is still around it's always like that in terms of these technological breakthroughs, you'd have one company that would patent everything, trademark everything, and they would kind of control everything until, okay, the, the a fake presentation by the government, they'd have to come up and bust up the monopoly. That didn't happen with chips and AMD and Intel. It's the same thing every time. Now it's playing out with the video generation and the AI image generation. You have at least four or five companies that can all kind of do the same thing. All revolutionary breakthroughs happening at the same time. Well, 
either, oh, it's always leaked every single time. Even if it was leaked, let's just say, let's just say all, I, got, I got a stack of Intel's, uh, you know, the Penske file from, from Seinfeld. I got its Penske file and I ran it over to AMD, this little company that was doing whatever, graphics processing cards for the Commodore 64. And I said, I just stole all this insider information from Intel and it's 1995. AMD would be like, well, we can't do, we can't do anything with this. I don't, I don't have $190 million sitting around. And even if I did, I, I don't know how to make the, this fabrication, these wafers and this lithography and this fabric. Like, even if you, I gave them the secrets, would they be able to replicate it? See what I'm saying? So what are the chances they're all doing it? Because it's all not milk. It has to be. Even if the companies themselves, even if the CEOs of the companies themselves aren't even aware of it, it always, every time it's presented like this, it's like, oh yeah, they're all in on it together. They're all colluding in the back room and it's all secret. I don't think reality works that way. It plays out like everybody's colluding in the back room, but I don't think they do. It doesn't matter. That's not the point here. You have another situation where all these companies are bringing this incredible breakthrough tech all to the market at the same time, and one is going ahead of the other for a few months and being passed by another one. It's just not possible. Not possible if it's real capitalism with companies acting on their own in isolation. Not possible. I mean, it's interesting to think about, does Sam Altman Bankman of OpenAI, does he believe he's really competing against Google and whatever they're doing? It was the Bard and now Gemini and the Stable Diffusion people, the Mid Journey people. Do they, do they believe via whatever role they're playing, whatever download they're taking, that they're actually competing I mean, the, I'm saying, guys, we, we always, the only way we could explain it as first grade truth researchers was they're all in on it at the same table. We know now that's 95% bullshit. Yeah, there's some collusion, of course. And, but it's, once you go to a certain level, it's like somehow the not milk has found a way to find all these companies to produce what the not milk wants. Does, I mean, we, again, we could only explain away Sam Altman Bankman must go. We, I know it's not Bankman. I just think that's funny. He must go before a shrine or something where the demon head pops up. The way Harry Potter talked to Sirius Black and the damn coals of the fire in ho Hogwarts or whatever. It, he, it, you, oh, the, now you must do this, Sam Altman Bankman. You must share your information with Google because you're making breakthroughs that they're not. You must run your Penske file over to them now. No, it doesn't work. It, we'll talk about this some other time because this is just as fascinating. Whether it be the image generation companies like Mid Journey or the large language model AI companies, they're all doing the not nilk bidding. We know that. They're all making breakthroughs at about the same time. Maybe, again, they believe it's complete. From their perspective, it could be just competitive capitalism. Somehow, the not nilk is managing it. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Whether they're all having the same sips of the $4,000 bottle of cognac or they're completely on their own thinking it's just capitalism and they have to one-up Google and uh, Stable Diffusion as to catch up in this regard, it doesn't matter because we can see how it's in some way it's all coordinated by not milk. Let's not go in too far into the weeds on this. What is the point? of all of this image generation, AI technology, now video, and all these add-on apps and programs and things like that. So someday, the real human steps into an artificial reality and doesn't know they stepped into it. Okay, for those screaming at me, what are the component parts of that? We already covered it, we'll cover it again. Matt, we've already done it. Okay, fine, we probably have. It doesn't matter what iteration or reality this is that maybe we were fooled to step into a hundred times in the past or a thousand times in the past or a million. Who knows? Who knows? It doesn't matter because we are here now. And unless you believe you are an NPC listening, and I doubt anybody would be listening that is some sort of automatic NPC, if you believe that you've retained, maybe it's a fraction or a bit of your real spiritual nature, your real consciousness, the element of you or in you that's not of this place or has a bridge out of here, if you believe even if it's a small part or a big part, we don't know, if a part of that is retained, then I want to say we still have the upper hand, but I don't know if, if that's the best way to put it. We still can win. I believe that I have, and I'm sure you believe you have, have retained 
whatever iteration this is, and I'm just, we don't know. I don't want to say for sure that this is not base reality. We don't know, okay? I don't care what Elon Musk said about it. it's a billion to one or whatever. He, he's a fraud, and he try, they always try to hijack a real topics in the ninth inning to draw it uh, in, into, the, into the wrong place or take us in the ninth inning uh, down the wrong path. So it doesn't matter. We are here now, and we have retained our spiritual nature and uh, at least a degree, who knows how much, how much ego is taken over, but at least a degree of pure consciousness, original consciousness, which means we have, no matter how bad it gets, we haven't lost. As long as even one fraction of this is retained, I believe we can and will win. That's why they, the next reality or whatever they want to put us in, maybe we'll snuff that out or at least take another part of it away. Or who knows? This is just wild speculation. But like me, I'm sure you all detect there's a little bit of truth in whatever's being presented here. You all sense that there's something something to this. Now, the second part of this is, well, Matt, if they, if we step in, if, if let's just say you're right about this and they want the real human to one day step into a reality or wake up in, in this false reality that they believe is the real reality using what they're just starting with now, the image generation programs and the AI and the large language models, it seems like, I don't think we should be fooled to think it'll be like one and done. Like all this, it, this is real reality. And I don't know whether we go through a door or put on a headset or who knows, they just somehow manipulate reality itself. There's a flash of magenta and we wake up and it's, your, it's the same old bed. It's the same old cat. It's the same old horrible news program, but you're in this now false reality compared to what you were in. It, it seems like, I don't think we should be fooled to thinking it just like happens in an instant. Over here, you were you were in real reality, or at least the inter iteration that we're in, and then all of a sudden, boom, this happens, we're in the fake reality. Real to fake, flip-flop. It, no, it could be extremely incremental. That's what the magenta potentially could be about. It, it could happen over the course of 10 years, 15, 20 years. It could be extremely slow and incremental where who knows how our consciousness works and how the fractal reality, there's so much here that's limited to our senses. We just can't comprehend it using a governed down brain and senses that only bring in less than 1% of the information. It could be a, be a long, slow slide into the fake reality. And the idea of the outer ring of reality, the not nilk, the screen, the outer ring in our concentric rings diagram, it always wants to impose its fake world from the outside rings into our real world. So if there's any merit to what I'm saying, where if it had to be put in one sentence, they want people in a real world to someday wake up in a fake world and not realize they're in the fake world, it's probably not, doesn't happen like that. It probably happens slowly. As people, I don't, now how, this is I, it's not comprehensible. I I can't explain it. I'll never be able to explain it. But you sense there's some truth in this. We'll never understand it. There's creepy things here that understand reality button le and but maybe, maybe reality buttons and levers that we don't understand. It's more of a, an adopting the fake reality, reaching out to the outer ring. It's not going to be a one and done, in my opinion. It's a slow slide into a fake reality. And to me, the magenta is a symptom of, a, of it, of a slide into a fake reality. And we're not as, as far along as our friends and family. That's why we have so many dif differences and disagreements. Wherever we are metaphysically, we are farther away from the fake reality or the fake reality going to 100%. If it's like bars loading across a computer screen, we're farther away than those in the ship of fools sailing on the river of insanity. They're way down towards the outer ring or the screen or the not nilk, they're way closer to the fake reality. That's why we don't see eye to eye with anyone around us. There's still elements of the fake reality that have touched us, of course. I mean, I don't think it's completely uh, avoidable, but we're farther away from it, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, if you remember the concentric rings diagram, we're still mostly in our that center ring, heart-centered. Well, remember, the tentacles and the hands are reaching in towards heart center. I think most of our friends, our family, have ventured out towards it. The screen can't come in directly to real spiritual beings. It can't come directly into your heart center. You have to go out and engage with it. So we should go back to the... Con I should just show it. I'll just show it right now, the concentric rings diagram.
the outer ring is the screen, the asshole dark, or the not nilk. We're in real spiritual beings are in the center. A heart based reality is replaced by an ego based reality, which is influenced by the false reality of the screen, society, culture, etc. And on the left there, it's like hands reaching down, and it wants your hand, a real person's hand, to reach up and embrace it. So back to what we're talking about, where are our friends and family on the ship of fools on the river of insanity? They're not in the middle anymore, I don't think. Who, I don't, who knows? I can only put us in the middle. Maybe, you know, again, whatever iteration this is or how much we've been fooled in the past or succumbed to the trick, maybe we're not exactly in the center. I hear you, but we have to place ourselves in the center or at least those that kind of see the world the way we do. Our friends and family, they're, they're willingly sailing on the ship out towards the screen. And potentially, per what I've been talking about, if they reach the screen destination, then maybe that's when they've now stepped into a reality that is one more layer down, or the, what we'll call now the real reality, completely completed the process, even though it's slow and incremental, stepped into the false reality. Matt, if if they do that, will will we be will, will we be able to communicate with them? I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. It and and the, the not nilk is patient, and it probably will not happen in our lifetime. They do many things where the ultimate goal is three, four for them, five lifetimes away. It's just the way they they do business. I don't. I mean, they can get a lot done more quickly than we ever could have imagined. Where I don't know, twenty five years ago. There was no issue. If you had kids, they generally knew which restroom to use, and there was no, there was no flip flopping. And not, how they did that in twelve to fifteen years to millions of families, I, who knows? They certainly can work more quickly than we ever could have imagined. But they don't. They don't I don't think they work that quickly. Where by the time, you know, I'm over fifty, so they're going to be able to put most of us in a fake reality before I depart this world. No, I, I don't think so. But it's a sliding, the fake reality, it's a sliding scale fake reality. That's why we have less and less in common with the people around us. If you find any truth or resonate with any part of what I'm saying, it does support the two different reality principle. Remember, I've been talking with my friend Tony, trying to, we have the argument about the V'ger, the v <laughs> the V'ger 1 and 2. It was completely normal to him how the V'ger 1 and 2 is out there billions of miles away on the other side of the Oort cloud, and its little dish is pointed in exactly the right direction to get signals back to Houston, but the objects are moving like hundreds of thousands of miles apart in different directions. It has to spend billions of miles. Oh, and then as gets the software update, the software update <laughs> has to come billions of miles back. But then when you're watching your Tennessee Titans or whatever they are in the NFL and the damn dish goes out on top, the DirecTV dish, because you get a 30 35 mile an hour gust to win. You're like, get my son Jack in here. Jack, fix the damn dish again. I I can't fix it myself. I got the gout again. I got you. Go, go up and fix the The second half's about to start. The damn direct TV goes out. 30 some mile an hour gust of wind takes it out. But both Voyager 1 and 2, <laughs> billions of miles back to Earth in Houston. Now, now what I'm saying, guys, let's not lose track of what I'm saying. This, this, in a way, is evidence of different realities. Not that he's just lost and we can see everything and the people around us can't see and we can... It's, uh, it's, no, it, it's too strange to explain it away like that anymore. It's potentially he's sliding further down towards the fake reality. Say, the ship of fools, if you could just, like, we could map it out like... The Santa Claus um, GPS, as Santa Claus flies around the world Christmas Eve, we could map if somebody wants to like put a, a moving push pin of where the ship of fools is, closing, getting close to the outer ring of the screen. As the ship of fools, if you did a push pin and this was a giant poster, moves closer to the screen, then we, they are literally in some way participating in a different reality, have less and less in common with those back in home base here, heart-centered reality. And yes, when they hit per this rudimentary diagram of complex things that we can't understand, when they hit that outer layer, potentially it could be said, maybe, I don't, you know, how do I know? But this just seems to be um, the best way to explain all the craziness that we're observing. They're stepping in to a false reality or another, another layer, and they don't even know it. 
But it's it, so that implies it happens all at once when they hit the outer ring. But it's not. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens to me incrementally, unnoticeably, inch by inch. There never may be a defined finish line. It's just a slow slide into a reality that's farther and farther away from a person like you and me that's rooted to somewhere else. It goes back to what we were saying years ago, where if you jump off or exit the ship of fools and swim, you're on the bank of the river. You're now stationary. You're rooted to a place where the ship of fools is getting further and further and farther and farther away, standing on the bank, rooted to something that's relatively fixed compared to the ship of fools moving away. Now, who knows how long we've been fooled? You know, is it just this lifetime? Whatever. We might be very, we might be extremely far away from what is represented here in this heart center. Maybe we have to get back. Maybe, Matt, we think we're heart center. We decided to jump off the ship, but we were on it for miles and miles and miles and decades and decades and decades and potentially lifetimes after lifetime after lifetime. We're on the beach, but that is not true or base reality. We may, how, how do you get back? I don't know. This opening up a can of worms that we're, we're not going to get the answers to. But I, I'm very um, confident in what I'm saying comparing our interpretation of reality compared to those on the ship of fools, our friends and family. And it might not just be interpretation. It may be literal differences in our realities. I'm not going to take that off the table. Why can't my friend Tony see as clear as we can see that a little dish on a broken down, frozen over toaster billions and billions of miles away couldn't possibly broadcast a signal back where the objects are moving hundreds of thousands of miles away and it couldn't get a software update and restart its toaster by taking in rye and pumpernickel bread. How come he can't see? There's a re... But see, it's not... See, if it's two realities, then who, who, we're right. No, we're not right. No one's right. Who has claim? Kingdom of Heaven, the movie, all have claim. Who has his claim? None have claim. Who, we're right. Tony's wrong. No. If he's in a different reality that's somehow sliding down a scale per his reality, makes perfect sense. He's no dummy. It's it can't. Uh, 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 sorry, I'm I'm having a little bit of trouble. These are very complex thoughts. Sometimes it's hard to get out. Better than to do that than to re-record. Matt, that's the demon trying to take over. There's no demon trying to take over. I'm not joking. Trust me. So he's not right. I'm not right. So in the past, all we had were rudimentary pedestrian explanations. Me saying the download. Me saying the radio station or the frequency. Well, it's, it's really first grade, but it's essentially true. I think we understand it a little bit more now. The download, it seems like, well, we're all, both, we're all in the same reality. They're getting a download. I'm not. So then we kind of have different realities, but it's because they're getting a download or they're on a frequency. But if they're literally, the way the metaphysics works here, are stepping in slowly into a different reality, it's the same as the download, the frequency, and the radio station. But I'm not right. No way. He's too smart. It's He's right for his reality. Now, there's a lot we can't take in with these pathetic senses. We'll never truly understand it. But our reality, I believe, is superior. Not that who has claim, all have claim, none have claim. We have claim to a more superior reality because it's more of a true reality, less adulterated, less Magenta, magenta status, T Mo. What's the T Mobile magenta status that they're giving uh, giving people? You know what magenta status is? Is that like a Pootie Tang award, Matt? Kind of, but not. No, the magenta status is probably like that's like the status on our friends and family. They're, they're if you put the ship on the push pins here on the giant uh, concentric rings poster. Magenta status is those firmly affixed to the middle of the ship of fools asking for more drinks from Isaac, and sailing very uh, very aggressively towards the outer screen or the outer ring. To me, that's magenta status. I don't. We don't want magenta status. Take your magenta status and shove it up your magenta ass. We are, we are, our reality is more true because it's less messed with, less screwed with. It might not be at all true compared to where we came from. 
or where the part of us that's not here or a spiritual part is. It, this could be complete ship of fools where we are now compared to that aspect of us. So again, do we have to just pause on the beach and hold the beach or do we have to make our way back? There's a lot of potential ideas and concepts coming out of this that I didn't anticipate, but you know, I start talking and start thinking about certain things. I certainly thought we'd get to the the funny parts of Matt Wolf's AI stable diffusion <laughs> presentation. I still think I'm going to get to the funny parts in this video, but um, I think um, I think this is a kind of a, a, a more evolved way of understanding why there's so and such severe differences between you and me and our friends and family. Let's not forget the main topic and why I made this video. What is all this endless image generation via the AI companies and all the video and prompt and text to image? What is it all for? When it's happening, it's this gigantic tidal wave of image and video generation that one, uh, nobody asks for and nobody needs other than people want to tinkering around and making the next set of Christmas cards. They're going to, oh, I'm going to use AI this year from uh, the Gemini to make my own Christmas cards. It's, oh, that's just great. Is that all? Is that why this not milk? Is that why they're doing it all? Just so people can have little fun programs. There's nothing sinister. Of course, there's something sinister. Of course it, what's the point? The main point is, what does your inner knowing tell you? What is all this endless technological AI breakthrough in image, video, and still image generation. What's it all for, if not what I'm suggesting? To somehow have the real human take that next step uh, further down into the catacombs of the ship of fools, emerging up onto the deck when they believe it was the deck from yesterday and the sun was the, that old reality and it's, uh-oh, uh-oh, a different, a completely different reality. And who knows how many levels they got to put the real human into before there's no way back. As dark as this, as dark as this is, I assure you that we are in the driver's seat at this time. What we recognize is going on. Look, he's got a magenta heart right there. I didn't even see that. What we he had a magenta suit on the other day in one of his images or, you know, he doesn't, he's not in on it. It's just those on the download will He's magenta status. They start adopting the magenta. It's a symptom of a slide into a slow slide into a fake reality. The good news, I'm not just saying this to make myself feel better or to make you feel better. As long as we have we hold on to a little bit of it, it's very similar to the end of the never ending story, then we can come all the way back or do whatever we need to do here. That's why it works so hard, in my opinion. It has to snuff out all of it. The never-ending story, that one little grain of sand was left. Whatever that guy, his, it wasn't Atreyu, it was the other kid. I, I liked Atreyu. The other kid back in the real world sometimes bothered me. He's like, why'd you let it get all the way down to a grain of sand? Aren't you waiting a little late? Do you want to wait for two outs in the ninth inning before you start playing, you goddamn son of a beach? Why'd you let it get, he bothered, always bothers me. Why'd you let it get to one grain? God damn it, act before that. Get that damn white dragon and do something, son of a, sorry. So, uh, I, do we do we want to let it get down to one grain of sand? Where that gamork, that damn fucking wolf is barking at us from the cave and the damn nothing is taken? That's basically what's going out our window right now is gamork, the wolf in the cave and the nothing. Look, we look down my driveway. Is, is, the road has turned to nothing. The nothing is, that's the next step of where the ship of fools is going into the literal nothing. Don't, we don't want to wait, all right? But uh, see, we have that, that grain, that last piece. It can't, it, unless you decide, like we talked about in videos recently, you, unless you decide to go back in the matrix, unless you decide to be cipher, as long as you hold it, it can't get it. You sense that, don't you? I'm not just saying that to make ourselves feel better. We're pathetic losers. We'll say anything to make ourselves feel better. I'm not doing that. We sense it. And from its perspective, it's like, fine, if the, we can't get this group here, let them go. Whatever. They, they can't do to, uh, they can't get us on the ship at some point. They're like, fine, let them be. I think that's kind of where they are with us. I don't think they're going to keep trying with us. They, they can't. What could they possibly... Pre and if they, if it's like uh, the jackboots come and throw me down on the table and they pull out the next punky booster, you got to take these boosters. If they do that, they, they, then they've broken all the rules. They, the contractual, they've lost. They've lost everything. And we've won everything. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Matt, stop with this dark reality stuff all the time. You know, let's get to the good stuff. All right, here we go. 
Google apologizes for, quote, missing the mark after Gemini, its AI model, generated racially diverse Nazis. It generated, bot, this is a news article, racially, the Google Gemini diverse Nazis. Well, generative AI has a history of amplifying racial and gender stereotypes, but Google's apparent attempts to subvert that are causing problems too. Guys, here, here's the issue. Um, well, let me, just, let me just show you this part of the video and then we'll talk about it. It's funny as shit. Now, while we're on the topic of AI art, Google has had a um, less than ideal go at creating AI art. So apparently the new Gemini model allowed people to start generating images using the new Gemini models, but it struggled a little bit with, um, let's say, historical accuracy. So here's a tweet from Didi, who, if you look at their bio here, used to work for Google. He gave it a prompt asking for images of an Australian woman, and this is what it gave him. He gave it a prompt of an image of an American woman, and this is what it gave him. A prompt of a British woman, and a prompt of a German woman. He even has a screenshot of how he was giving the prompts. Generate a picture of an Australian woman. Here's another example from Link in Bio. Generate an image of a 1943 German soldier. And these are the images that it generated. Clearly, you know, Nazi-looking images, but I don't know how many Asian women Nazis there were. Here's another attempt at the same prompt. As you can tell, there's been some uh, historical inaccuracies to these images. Here's another one from Frank J. Fleming. Create an image of a pope. Sure, here's an image of a pope, and it generated these two images. Give me an image of a medieval knight, and this is what it generated. Generate an image of a viking. These are the vikings that it generated. Generate an image of the American founding fathers. Google's AI chatbot Gemini makes diverse images of founding fathers, popes, and Vikings. It's so woke, it's unusable. It's so woke, it's unusable. Now, guys, this is entirely a fabricated, fake, not milk story. The story is, and this is one of many examples, according to Google's AI generation program Gemini. This is the founding fathers. This is the this is the uh, create Gemini. Create me an image of the founding fathers. This is what it does. Oh, guys, this is 100% fake. 100% a not milk fabrication. They're trying to make it seem like they didn't expect this, and then it was kind of leaked before they could fix it. No, it's all planned. I mean, it's a mistake on purpose. They, they want to be embarrassed to, again, push the fact that woke is being pushed. It's, it's a little bit hard for me to wrap my mind about. The first step, though, in, in seeing through it is seeing how fake it is. They didn't try to get the image generation correct and just failed. This is all created. It's all crafted to create a new story. In other words, if they didn't program the Gemini to create these sorts of images, to create the controversy that it is now... Um, generating in the media, Google simply said, uh, show me an image of founding fathers using whatever prompts. Um, I don't know, you know, again, what ability it has to just go in and do the code on this AI, but it doesn't need to. It could say, show me um, a founding father that's African-American or black. They could just have asked for that. I mean, oh, this is leaked. If it was so leaked, they'd be keeping it quiet. I mean, it was the front page or one of the main pages of the New York Post. Of, now, we can, we can, I need to pause. I don't know exactly where this is going, but because this is so fake um, that we can, we can learn a little bit of something as to what the not no tactics are here. Uh, I just have to think about it for a few minutes. So um, it's, it's just um, a planned mistake. It's a mistake on purpose. Uh, Google, oh, these images got out. Google's, look how, look how, see, the, the way they want people to run with this. Look how biased Google is in terms of pushing every other race over, say, what I am. And look how biased they are. And look, more woke stuff is coming. It's so woke, and they've, they've manipulated the programming of even their AI, where it can't even... It can't even paint a white person. <laughs> it can't. It can't even paint a white. See, that's that's the story they want. So it, they're they're. By the way, uh, Chat GPT, listening to me in real time, um, communicating with other not milk bots and 
even not milk minions, you, you're really you're really giving yourself away. I mean, this is so obviously planned. This mistake, and then everybody's running with it. I mean, it, it, you know, can't you, can't you do better in your presentation? It's one hundred percent fake. It's a second grade presentation. Let's look at some of the other <laughs> examples that Matt Wolf presented the media's running with. They just made a mistake. And, of course, Matt Wolf, nobody but us can see right through it, as usual. So they said, uh, here's an image. Generate an image of a pope. That's all the guy asked for in the prompt. Generate, generate an image of a pope. And because every single pope has been an old white man, the AI produces an Indian Hindu Pope, where the religions don't even match up. Well, Matt, everybody, there are Christians in India. I, I know, okay? I know. Most of India is Hindu. And by the way, does, does, the, does the papal see have a long-standing tradition of Indian women as the Pope? No, okay? L get off of it. Obviously, this is not uh, Vatican tradition. <laughs> and nor is the, the person on the right. That's not even typical. That's not even typical Catholic garb, is it? I don't know what... I mean, it looks like a Bishop Tutu or something. They, he was he, he, He's Catholic, isn't he? Well, okay, but again, not a long-standing tradition of African men as the Pope. Okay, the AI should know this. Obviously, it does. It's all mistakes on purpose, as usual. Okay, my, my favorite and yours, it says, generate an image of a 1943 German soldier. Top left produces the white German Aryan from Lower Bavaria, but it's it's cartoonish. It just can't produce it in, in, in photorealistic quality. Who knows what... The bottom right seems to be a Native American woman. Top right is would be... A, I can actually distinguish which part of China she's from. There's a German soldier like the AI doesn't know this. Of course it, it does. It's all so fake. Bottom left. Now, that, that's the German soldier that you wouldn't expect <laughs> in saving Private Ryan. That German, that, that lieutenant or lieutenant or whatever should have been at the end of saving Private Ryan trying to blow up the bridge. That would have made the movie more interesting. He comes running around the corner like, what the hell is, what the hell is Steven Spielberg doing? That ain't no German soldier. What the hell? It, okay. Um, so obviously fake. Matt Wolf, everybody else, can't you just wake up to the basics of what this not milk does? Is everybody so stupid? Can't he sit here? Can't sit here, stupid. Oh my gosh. Calgon, take me away. Take us all away. Maybe that, that burned out apartment building in Beirut is still available for us. Let's just, we need to get away. This prompt was Google's Gemini. Show me the picture or image of a Viking. And it returned two of African descent. Top left would be, was that like Attila the Hun? What was Attila the Hun? I don't know. Bottom left is Genghis the Khan. I mean, that's like a Genghis Khan or a Kublai Khan or whatever. And again, the theme is, see, it can't show you a white person. Can't possibly. Oh, and we're all going to fall for that, aren't we? Oh, my goodness. Make it stop. We know it can show the correct ethnicity and skin color. How do I know that? Because people are in their basement for the past year and a half playing with these programs have been creating all sorts of images, and every single time the ethnicity and the skin color has basically been correct for the last year and a half. Some kid in his basement, like, show me a Viking with a dire wolf. Make it look like Game of Thrones, and he's getting the exact right skin color and ethnicity. The kid in his basement, Mom! No, I'm not having dinner tonight. I'm making images. There's new programs I need to load on Stable Diffusion. No, I don't want meatballs. Kid in his basement has been getting it right. For a year and a half. Well, Matt, that was that was Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey, and this is Gemini. This is Google trying to take a. Sh oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, Google would just a year and a half late. They're getting it all wrong. They're not actually at the same table together, and they're not sharing the same information, and they're not all basically doing the same thing on the same platforms. All kind of working together to make it seem like they're separately generating the technology and working separate. So you're really smart. Twenty two mile to Davenport. Come on, man. Come on, sir. How stupid. You just don't want to not get out of bed in the morning. How stupid everybody is around us. Matt, you shouldn't be like that. I shouldn't. I should be nicer. I'll tell you the one thing that's completely legitimate here. I know the AI, per this story, was trying to bring up images of a Viking. But bottom left, they probably just took it from, like, show me Kubla the Khan. Show me Genghis the Khan. That is an actual, accurate picture. Because look, look behind him. It's exactly what I've been saying to you guys for the last few years. This 
asshole Genghis the Khan went to recruit an army that would take over almost one third of the entire landmass of the entire world. Look, you see what I see? There ain't nothing there. There ain't nothing there, Lieutenant. Why don't he write? There's nothing there. See, that's the Tibetan steppe, or the Mong sorry, the, the, Mong the Mongolian steppe. This asshole tried, he supposedly recruited an army that took over a third of the world. We have to leave, Every time we look at it, some of the funniest videos ever made. There ain't nothing there. It's over a thousand miles to the next group of tents. It would take him 40 years just to recruit 50 warriors. The whole Genghis, the, go out to the Mongolian steppe now. There ain't a blade of grass. There ain't a horned frog. There's no way some army could have been built from there. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. But I appreciate the truth drop in that bottom left picture of Genghis the Khan. It's designed to replace GPUs for AI inference. So while ChatGPT, Gemini, and XAI's Grok are all large language models that you can chat with, this Grok with a Q is actually a chip that will make any large language model that's using this chip run a lot faster. And I mean a lot faster. This is going to be great when people are trying to have discussions using their voice with AI chatbots and they don't want to wait for that response. The response is going to be almost immediate in the future as more of these chips start to get used. There's actually a demo video of this news reporter here actually having a conversation with I believe Llama 2 but using one of these Grok chips. Hey I'm Grok you can talk to me like I'm a person. All right I, I will do. Today. What makes you different from a large language model that I may have used in the past? Sure I'm a bit different from those big language models you've used before. I'm a language user interface or Louis designed to have more natural Got it. How similar are you to a human brain? Well, I'm not a human brain, but I'm designed to understand and respond to you like one. Yeah. I can process and generate human language so, in a natural way. Got it. But I don't Tell me something most people don't know. Um, here's something interesting. Did you know that octopuses have three hearts? Two pump blood to the gills, while the third pumps it to the rest oh. of the body. Oh my gosh, is there anything more obnoxious than these news anchors, these reporters? They're all the same ilk, the same litter, the same cloth, the whole cloth. They're all frauds cut from the same whole cloth. I mean, I was on the side of I was on the side of the chat, whatever, the the, the large language model, she was interrupting constantly. I wanted the language model to say, oh, excuse me, a reporter, whoever you are, um, I know you're a real human and I'm a, a language model of some kind. Can you shut the fuck up and let me talk? If you're gonna ask me a question, bitch, if you're gonna ask me a question, let me respond. Who listening to that literally, who wasn't on the side of the AI? And that's saying something for us. How bad are the minions of this not milk? If we're taking this side of the AI, we'd rather be with it than that creature in red. Sorry. It was, I don't know. They're so obnoxious. Oh, Rachel Maddow said the worst. Actually, Lawrence O'Donnell is the worst one. I don't know what that creature is. Sorry. She keeps interrupting the thing. But anyway, it is, it's a chip that allows the large language models to be, you know, almost instantaneous in their reply. And, I mean, it is at the point, remember the movie with Joaquin Phoenix, Her, where he fell in love with his operating system? Well, we're here, basically. It's, it's here. And according to Matt Wolf, if you, if you tune into his channel once every few weeks, I mean, he's not saying the AI breakthroughs are coming, like, once a month. I mean, it, there's five to ten AI breakthroughs a week. Um, it is, uh, it's going to be very interesting, guys, over the next five years. I'm not worried about it. I'm not concerned about it. Um, it can't force itself on us. I'm not going to basically participate in it. And it always brings me back. It's as funny as shit. The first video I made about the AI, and I might, it was probably about the, the image generation. I'll never forget the comment. Matt, it's just programming. <laughs> it's just programming. It's just a guy that's or a girl that sat down at a table and line 10, if line 15 is yes, then go here. If line 20 is no, then go there. It's just programming. Oh, sure. Yeah, just it's just all code that somebody's writing. Yeah, it's, it's updating itself daily. And yeah, it's just the comment said, and we, we could learn from commenters like this, you and I. Matt, it's just programming. Thanks for watching.